Hi, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us for today's webinar. I'm delighted to be able to say I'm joined by two, um, of, uh, two of my colleagues from uh, South South Water, uh, Christine and Aidan. Hi, Christine. Hi, Aidan. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Great to have you on. Um, today we're going to be looking at um, crisis versus service. So basically, how do you handle and take care of social media in those moments when everything seems to be hitting the fan and you basically have to jump and react and but also maintain a good level of service whilst responding to crisis and we've got some great insights and some really interesting stories coming up from Christine and Aidan um, but before we jump into that I just want to remind everyone uh, you're on mute so if you've got any questions please just submit them into the little questions box hopefully you can see on the screen um, and I think we'll have a little bit of time at the end uh, for your questions and we'll whiz through those um, with the help of Aidan and, and Christine uh, to dig into any of those points or anything you want to uh, discuss further. Um, so if you're joining us today, um, do give us a shout out, tweet us or mention us on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, yeah, always great to see who's on board and where you're joining us from. So do let us know. Um, yeah, love to see that. Um, before we jump into the main uh, content for today's session, if it's the first time you're joining us on a webinar, I just wanted to whiz through just for two minutes, just to introduce you to who Crowd Control HQ is, uh, so you can learn a little bit more about us. So, Crowd Control HQ um, is a social media management platform, um, and we support in a few different key areas. So, one is around engage. So, if you're trying to engage customers or clients or your residents or um, any audiences that you might have on social media, Crowd Control HQ is really designed to help you uh, reach and engage those, those, uh, those audiences, and we've got a whole suite of features that help, help you to do that. Um, next is around management. So if you've got multiple social media accounts, lots of people using social media, high volumes and velocity of social media activities and interactions, uh, we can support you with that to streamline and make it a little bit more efficient uh, the way you're working with your social media. Um, the next is around analytics. So if you need to know what's working, what's not working, um, looking for new opportunities when it comes to social media, uh, we've got a whole suite of um, reports and, and metrics to support you with that. And what makes us a little bit different at Crowd Control HQ, we're not just another social media management platform. We're here to make sure that you can succeed and make, and make sure that social media is delivering uh, for your objectives. So we're here to hold your hand and guide you through the whole process and make sure that you, you stay on top of all your social media uh, efforts and strategies. Um, who do we work with? So we're a UK-based UK -based, UK organisation. We work with many of the uh, many brands that you might recognise um, across many different industries, some public sector, some private sector, um, probably you name it, you know, we have clients that are working in that sector. Um, the last thing I want to mention before I hand over to Christine and Aidan for today's session, um, if you find the topic of today's session is interesting and you want an opportunity to learn a little bit more, um, we've got our annual conference coming up on the 1st of July. We would love to see you there. Uh, you can go to crowdcontrolaq.com forward slash inspired uh, and take a look at the, at the event. And if you really want to go, look, just, just uh, send me a message after this session. Uh, we have got some free tickets to give out. Uh, so, so let me know and I can, I, can, uh, I can sort you out. So without further ado, Aidan and Christine, I'm going to pass it over to you. So hopefully you can see the slides and you have full control. You've got the power. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so you can probably guess I'm Christine and this is Aidan. Hi. I'm a um, communications manager, so I look after all things comms, that's internal comms, external comms, website, social media, branding, etc. etc. Um, I'm Aidan, I'm the more high maintenance one out of the two of us. Um, I'm the our customer experience lead um, here in South Staffs Water, um, particularly specialising in digital innovation um, and improving the customer experience for wholesale operations um, when things go wrong out in the or planned work. Okay, so hopefully you know who we are because you've probably Googled us, but we are South Staffs Water and Cambridge Water. We supply clean water to both of those regions that you can see in little pink dots pink areas um, and it is only clean water that we supply so we don't deal with poo. Okay, next slide. 
Um, just to give you an idea of the scale of what we do, um, we supply water to the tap, so I'm going to have to read this out, 690,000 households, which is about 1.6 million people, plus almost 47,000 businesses, schools and hospitals. So um, that's a lot of water mains, if you can picture it. So if we took all our water mains out and stretched them, they would reach from Birmingham to San Francisco. So I hope you know why we're here, but in terms of a crisis for us, do you have any idea what the crisis is for a water company? Well, that picture was one of them. A bad one. <laughs> first water mains. So this was um, our most recent first water main. Um, and we had to declare a major incident for that because we unfortunately took out the side of the house. Um, they don't always, thankfully, turn out like that. Um, so they could just cause they could cause a flood, um, or they could be less visible but still impact a lot of people. It could be day or night. Um, we don't know when it's going to happen, and um, it's. Um, we don't know what's going to happen at the start, but that's also the same for our customers, our consumers. So how we deal with it is really important and how we deal with it is a joined up approach through the comms team and also our customer services team. Um, so I hear you all asking, um, well, I don't because we're on a webinar, but I'm imagining you're asking, um, I'm imagining you're asking, well, how do you do it? Um, and it's quite simple. Um, we push the social because it's digital and really, really cheap. Um, customers told us that they wanted to be kept informed. Um, so we used to send this text message out, um, which we thought was great, and it basically just said, hey, we've got a burst in your area, we're working to fix it. Job done, we're doing our bit, we're keeping customers informed. Um, but it didn't really achieve anything, it didn't give us any real answers. So now what we do is we push to social media with this fancy, fancy text, um, which is an RCS text. Um, which diverts people to our Twitter feed and also our website. Um, because of who we are, we're a natural monopoly. Um, so essentially where you live, you don't get to choose who your water comes from. So because of that, we're heavily regulated um, by Offwatt, DWI, CC Water, etc. cetera. Um, as part of that, we get financial incentives um, if we do good and also financial penalties if we do bad. So one of our ODIs, our outcome delivery incentive, um, is about our customer satisfaction. So what we found is by pushing people to social media in a crisis, we were able to respond to people um, very, very quickly. Now, the quicker we responded to people, the higher our CSAT score was. So if it took us more than 30 minutes, we was only getting an 87% satisfaction score. If we responded under 30 minutes, that went up to 91%. But if we went that one step further and responded within 15 minutes of an initial inquiry, our CSAT score went jumped to 98%. Wow. Now, these percentage points don't seem much. However, they are huge for our customer satisfaction. Um, so during an incident, our actual average response time is two minutes, um, which we think is pretty, pretty impressive. And since October of last year, we've launched a 24-hour social media service um, where our SLA is 100% of interactions are to have a response in under 15 minutes. Um, the reason why we push people to Twitter via text message during a water crisis is because, like I said, it's really, really cheap. Dealing with a tweet costs us 19.5p compared to 2.25, 2 £2.25 for a phone call. Um, so it's a no-brainer, really, and actually we're being proactive. We're getting the message to consumers before they have to call us. Mm -hmm. um, the way that we respond and interact um, with customers is also quite important. So we created a social charter. Um, and for those of you that can spell it, spell social. It's an acronym of social. Um, so, so we broke it down and, and we actually um, spoke to consumers and said, actually, what, what do you want? We looked at the market trends, who was doing what, and we took a little bit of everything and sort of brought it into our own. So we created the social charter. Um, and S is obviously speedy. We've already talked about what a speedy route of response does for our CSAT scores. So it's a no brainer to make that the top of our list. We also want to go over and above. Um, just because you have to do something doesn't mean that you have to be boring about it. You can be fun and engaging. Um, 
everybody goes on an aeroplane now and again um, and the one thing they have to do is give you that that brief bit about if there's no landing here's the seat belts and these air things come down from the sky um, and you put them over your face however american airlines start wrapping it and doing what they want to do essentially they're doing the exact same thing they're getting the information across but they're making it fun and engaging and that's what we aim to do in social and it's okay to be open and honest it's okay to say hey sorry you've got no water and you're not going to have any for 12 hours as long as you're open and honest about that and you're transparent um, we also like to get our community involved um, because it shows more authenticity. We're a community company. Um, yeah, we've got shareholders and stakeholders, but essentially we're there for our community and it helps to get them involved and it helps them fight your corner for you. We want to keep it individual and in channel. Keep it in the channel of their choice. It's their choice to contact you via social media, um, albeit we've pushed consumers there, but they're happy they stay there. And it's also an open forum. If one person's thinking that question, there's going to be more than one person thinking the same question. If we're re responding in an open forum, then everyone's going to get that same question. So again, you're reducing your handling time and you're reducing your amount of questions. We also like to make it an effortless experience. Again, answer the question for them um, before they get to you. And be authentic. I always like to say imit imitate Anton Deck. Anton Decker, like the, the world's nation's favorite presenters. And that's because they're authentic. They do real life things for real life people. I was watching Anton Decker at Takeaway on Saturday night and they did this thing where they went in and they, they was in this office and they played a game. But they chose Greg's. Everybody knows Greg's. It, it's a high street name and everybody has a steak bait now and again. And, and it was about that. Actually, I can relate to that. But if they'd gone to Harrods, I go there maybe once a year. I can't relate to it like I can with Greg's. And then finally, listen. Um, listen to what you're being asked and told. We all make the mistake of actually hearing this is what the consumer's telling us, so this is what we're going to answer. But actually, go into infinite detail. What are they actually asking us? Um, and then let's go from there. Um, and it's okay if you can't do what the consumer or customer wants you to do, um, but explain your reasons as to why you can't do it. And we tend to find that people are a lot more understanding there. Can so I just say, sure. I really love the um, the social uh, acronym. It just makes it super simple. It's really important, uh, but it just breaks it down as a nice little reminder in a simple way. I think a lot of other companies could benefit from something like that. Just really, Absolutely. really, really like it. So I was just wondering which one of us was Ant and which one was Deck. <laughs> <laughs> right, so... When the crisis happens, um, during the daytime, obviously, we're covered because we've got a whole office full of people. Um, but out of office hours, we've only got our standby incident team. So although um, Aidan mentioned we have now got 24-7 social media cover, it's, it is limited compared to the daytime. Um, so that means there's only really one or two, time, two people looking after social media, um, the proactive posts and then also the, the reactive. So we have to have our <clears throat> toolkit to cover all of that. And um, our toolkit is our web si website, which is we have an instant page, um, Aidan's mentioned texts and social media. So this is coming up on the screen now are some examples. Um, this one was an example of when we had a burst which made us have to close a major dual carriageway. So, like I said, we don't know what's going to happen. And when we this happened, we didn't know we were going to be shutting the dual carriageway for a weekend. So the key for us was to um, update often before anyone asks the question and try and use photos too. So this one, as I said, was first water main in the middle of the A38. Um, the dual carriageway had to be shut southbound because um, to enable our guys to get out of there to do the work for their safety. These are just some of the tweets. Um, we were able to get the water back onto the customers quite quickly because we're able to do clever things like reroute re the water mains to other bits. It's all but, very technical. Yeah, that's the science bit. But there's still the work that has to be done to repair the bit that's broken, resurface and everything. So that road had to stay shut for most of the weekend. Um, the good thing about this one was that our tweets were being picked up by um, our customers, 
and also the local Twitter account that deals with traffic on the A38 and also the local press as well. So it meant that we were getting good coverage. Um, everyone knew that the, the road was closed, where the diversions were. The added problem we had on this particular weekend, which was a bank holiday, um, when it was, but it was when there was quite a big football match coming on, um, championship playoff final between Derby and Aston Villa. In Wembley. So Derby fans getting down to Wembley, A38 is their primary route. Um, there were a whole lot of fans wanting to know when that boat was going to be open. Um, so that led to a sort of secondary crisis, not just the first water main, but the fact that all these people wanted to get down the A38. So um, the tweets worked. Um, they were picked up, as I said, by the, the A38 um, Twitter account and the press. Everyone had panic, had um, updates as, as quickly as we could get them to them. And luckily, we did manage to open that road in time for those football fans to get down to Wembley. I don't know, did they win? I don't know. I can't remember. No, I think I was in the pub at that time. I was drinking. <laughs> uh, it's not all good. Now I can't read that. I hope you can read that one. But this is um, from a, uh, another incident that we had when we were getting um, quite a lot of criticism. And this was um, sort of one of the early ones, really. Um, this was when the burst meant the water was off for quite some time in um, Smethwick. And um, we had to provide some alternative water supplies for our customers. Um, at that time, although we were providing the water, we were asking people to bring containers so they could take them, take the water home with them. And um, this guy was, was got a bit cheeky. Are you able to read that? Um, he asked for his granny's um, bedpan oh, chamber right, party, yeah. so he's going to take his granny's bed chamber pot. <laughs> So on, on the flip side, like, like I said, we can be a, a bit human with it. And, and Aidan was his usual self. He was answering it on that at that time. And I just sort of <laughs> said, be sure to give it a rinse first. Um, in hindsight, it's probably not the best advice given that there was no water. Um, but it worked. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also in that we did have some lovely compliments. Um, so I'm, I'm, I think I need some reading glasses here. Um, so essentially a customer had thanked us um, for working through the night in the cold That's and the right, dark yeah, yeah. Um, to sort it out. Um, and then we said, oh, thanks. We'll, we'll pass on your, your thanks to the team um, yeah, when the works we'll, are complete. I'm not going to disturb that and break that down. And then that, that guy, you won't recognise his name, said that we shouldn't be thanked for doing our jobs. But then luckily um, someone called Andy came in and said, uh, said yes, we should be thanked. So, uh, ding dong, thank you, Andy. So that was nice, and that reinforces like the community bit from our cho from our social charter. Yeah. And then this this one almost brought a tear to my eye. So this this one was communities coming together. Um, it's people offering to collect water for other people who can get out to do it. Um, so, and they're they're being nice as well, saying you know we can see you're working hard to fix it. So so that was that was really nice. And uh, and then again, do you recognise that name? Um, I think this person is probably related to that chamber pot guy. Um, she she tagged the tweets. Um, okay, we were in contact with them anyway, um, but it's okay. We they control us. That's how we learn. Uh, I think we we counted twenty six comments from her um, in wow. total on that night. Mm, it, it was huge. Um, so the proof is in the pudding really. We mentioned that we um, sent these texts out and we divert people to our Twitter feed for regular updates. Um, within five minutes of sending that text we see a reduction of 62% in call volume. Um, imagine that for the cost of a 2p text message um, that drives contact so much. Because we're so heavily regulated, we don't encourage unwanted contacts, and this is one of the great ways to do it. During our analysis, we also found that 48% of customers um, self-identified as being vulnerable or having a mental health condition requiring extra support. Um, so I don't want to lay stats in concrete, um, because this is during a crisis. 
Um, but that volume compared to 7% and voice channels really speaks volumes to us. And that kind of tells us that social media is a channel of choice for customers who don't want to explain themselves over the phone mm. and uh, the anonymity of social media. Um, and there were zero people that contacted us in a voice channel after clicking the link in our Twitter feed, um, which again is evident in itself that, that social is quick, easy and cheap um, uh, on such a wide scale. Um, yeah. The 96% of people that discuss brands online do not follow those, those brands owned by profiles according to Brandwatch. So it's important to signpost. Um, Christine will talk shortly um, about people talking about us but not tagging us and not mentioning us on our page. So they're all talking amongst each other. So if we're signposting, then that's an amazing thing to do. Um, we also went to talk something called troll conversion therapy. Um, <laughs> I remember Anita Meehan, um, who, Owen Meehan, sorry, who was trolling us. Um, we listened to her because again that's part of our social charter we listened to what she was saying and in the end she was saying actually you've got these various alternative water supplies um but there's none near me can you get some to me and i will help deliver it um and that's exactly what we did um and then she ended up thanking us um for doing it which was absolutely amazing And the beauty of what the, what the way we work is that we can do this anywhere. And um, for that particular Smedic, wasn't it? Aidan happened to be at a Premier Inn, although other hotels are available. <laughs> um, he was hoping to um, have a nice quiet night, but um, Smedic burst happened. So, but because he was able to log into crowd control, see all the social media, he was able to pick up the um, queries while I was dealing with the proactive stuff. So it really doesn't matter if you're at home or you can do it anywhere. Um, but don't have some room service. So <laughs> hopefully the Wi-Fi as well. So. <laughs> now this one, don't panic. It wasn't us, and thankfully. Um, but it's not just, Aidan sort of mentioned this, it's not just about replying to messages. So I wish I could hear you for this one, but if, if I ask you a question, how many of you know the answer to this? How many, num what's the number of each species of animal that Moses took on to? Two. Yeah, you might say two. Two, not, because it wasn't Moses that took them onto the ark, it was Noah. Yeah. So it's all about listening. So we use social listening and um, that means we can pick up people who aren't mentioning us. So people They might be talking about us, talking about the issues, but not tagging us so we're not getting notifications. Um, and Aidan also mentioned that 96% um, of people who discuss brands online don't follow their accounts. So what we're able to do is set up a Vosmo monitor on crowd control to spot particular words, blood, no water, um, or even just our name. Um, and that way we can we can pin it to a geographical area as well, so we can we can uh, spot people talking about us and we can respond to them. Um, that means we can pick up comments from customers that we haven't already seen, and it also helped us um, pick up a tweet from someone who has actually got quite a lot of followers. He was um, someone called Ben's Twitter who had seventeen thousand followers. Who and called himself to... Princess? Ben. Oh, that's right, and he turned out to be. A... <laughs> To us, but he was talking about us, didn't mention us. Um, so we found him that way. And the good thing about this is it, it can increase your following. So um, all the people that start interacting with us and that we interact can will then start following us. So if I asked you, are you following your water company? I would imagine the answer is no. I mean, Dan, are you following your water company now? I hope you are. No, no, can't say anything. You should oh, know better, Dan. You should know better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so follow your water company, please, people. Um, the other thing to look at as well is we've talked about Twitter, but um, a lot of people like Facebook groups these days, and they'll just go off on one in Facebook groups. So um, we try a lot. We can't do this through crowd control, unfortunately, but we do have to look in Facebook groups. 
find the ones that are relevant and see what people are talking about there. We've seen very funny things going on, talking about that it caused contaminating the water and some other rubbish. So it's great to there and straight. And again, it's a matter of yeah. that public domain actually we've jumped in and the record straight. Um, so after we've um, dealt with a crisis, we constantly look at what we've done, what worked well, what didn't work well, what do we need to do. Um, so the longer winding road, the continuing journey for us is, is it's, a, it's a blank piece of paper because we're constantly reviewing and learning based on what our customers have said and what feedback they've given us in how we've dealt with things. Um, one of the things currently developing is an automated tweet to text function where whenever we issue a tweet, then a customer will get this text message. Um, it's appearing very, very small on, on my screen, well, on our screen. Um, but for those of you that can see it fully, um, you'll notice that there's a spelling mistake in there. So I'm also working on that as a personal development plan. Um, but that's okay, because like we say, it shows we're human and it reinforces authenticity. People don't want robots to speak into them. They want real people. And that odd typo, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, at the, at the end of the day, we, we sort of, we rode for it all. And then some of these, these are some of like the amazing tweets that we get post a crisis. And that's when you know that actually it's been a huge success in what you've done, although it's been painful because you've got, you've got guys out in the field digging up roads, um, trying to manage people and, and you're getting slated and you're getting accused of this and you've done it on purpose and, and, and whatnot. But when you've actually educated and explained to see the next day that people are telling my managers that I need a pay rise um, and an award, which I agree to, um, hasn't happened yet. Um, but when you see those, those kind of things, it actually makes you think, actually, yeah, that this is all worth it. Um, we've got some sort of key takeouts, really. When it, when it all dries up, this is a picture of me in my kitchen um, drinking gin. Um, and then looking at the stats of what we achieved during a crisis. Um, but there's just some take home things really um, at the end of that crisis when you're all feeling that adrenaline, adrenaline rush coming down. It's a bit of an anticlimax. Learn and reflect, use that data that you've gained and help it build towards your next crisis event. Update people, even if there's no update that you want to go public with just say hey guys we're still working on repairing this pipe hey guys we're still doing this people want to be kept informed because if they don't hear from you they think that there's a problem and, and it's just natural instinct for people to start worrying and panicking that, that something's happened that isn't again be human we can't stress that i'm stress that enough use your omnichannel approach and use your influences um, influencers because they're the people that are going to that have got a lot more followers than we have and they're going to get your message across for you and they're going to reinforce that fact again aim for a hundred percent response rate and a quick turnaround time there's no easier way of causing dissatisfaction than responding to some people and not others even if they are trolling you respond to them because that's their opinion and like i said if one person's thinking that you sure as hell know that other people are going to be thinking that exact same question have people trained in your style and tone that wouldn't normally use social media. Some inc incidents and crisis can go on over a prolonged period of time. It's not sustainable to have the same team in day in, day out doing the same thing. If you needed to switch to a 24 hour service, have you got the people that can respond to that um, in the style and tone that you would normally use? So it's a consistent approach. Um, and I think the final thing is ask yourself what Anton Deck would do. Um, I'm not on commission, by the way. Um, but but yeah, ask what would they do? There's a reason why they win an award every single year at the National Television Awards. And that's because people relate to them. What would they do? How would they respond? Um, and then the final, final thing is always have an emergency supply of gin. Or a cup of tea. Or, or tea. Final thing for me is to follow your water company. So, and the Twitter handle for Southwest Water is? 
The Twitter handle is um, STH. at STH Staffs Water. Brilliant. It's the same space. So people can find you, go follow you. And I will certainly follow my water company now, and I definitely don't. And I think you're right, most people don't. But when you see some of the examples that you've shown today, you can understand actually why it might be quite helpful. <laughs> so you know what's going on. Christine, Aidan, it was it's so insightful just to hear how you're handling this and um, some of the events and crises that you have to handle, like the image of the building at the start of the presentation. I never knew that kind of thing could happen just from a burst of water main, so it kind of brings up to life a little bit. Uh, but, <laughs> so again, it, it was the first time that's ever happened in our history. And hopefully the last. And hopefully the last. <laughs> so it's not a common occurrence for sure by the sounds of it. One thing that just really stood out for me is um, it's just so nice to see how as a as an organization or as a brand where you just kind of can easily be seen as uh, someone who you know you can sit behind your keyboard and just throw abuse at because you know it's their job to handle these kind of things but with you know your approach with, your, with the social charter and the approach to respond to every single uh, person and just yeah the the the, the 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 taking the time to do that how you can actually turn people from well, I would sort of call like complainers into actually being advocates where they start off really, you know, dissatisfied or unhappy and then they end up thanking you and sort of helping and supporting and offering um, to do things for the community. So th does it take a long time to kind of get to that point uh, with people? I guess there's some which never, you can never really win them over, but you can soften them up a little bit and then others you can really turn it around. Yeah, and I guess that that's general to real life situations. Some people are harder to penetrate than others. Um, but again, it's about adapting your style to match them um, as opposed to a one size fits all um, pick up. It's also good to have a cheeky look at their profile to see what you've got in common. Um, what groups are they following? Name drop a certain group or a certain sport. Um, and again, that helps people then see you as a human. And actually, it's not just somebody sat at a desk behind a computer screen and a keyboard. I'm actually speaking to a real person um, yeah. about that humanizing thing. And that can be hard in a crisis when, you, when there's so much going on. Um, so it is handy to have different people sort of doing different things someone doing the social listening, someone doing the practice. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So um, I've got a few questions here. So guys, uh, everyone that's on the line today, if you've got any questions, please do submit them to the little uh, question box that you should be able to see. I've got the first couple here. So question from Roshni. Um, do you ever have instances of fake news? And how do you deal with it if, if you do? Fake news about us? Um, I is guess that, so. That... Yeah, I guess so. We've had doesn't... people saying that terrorists have contaminate, contaminated our water supply before. Wow. Um, and, and again, it's about putting the record straight in a human way, using facts and figures. Um, for instance, we're heavily regulated. Every single every single drop of water that leaves our treatment works is tested. We go out and sample um, X amount of properties per day. Um, and we make those results public. They're on our dashboard, on our mm -hmm. website. Um, so again, it's about signposting that no, this isn't the case. Yeah, makes sense. So just be really clear and as proactive as you can. I guess you don't want anything like that to sort of fester and uh, become something bigger than it, than it, it should be. So, um, so another question here, that question from David. Um, what's the best way or method of training up non-social savvy staff for use in a crisis? So I guess that's alluding to the point. So where, if something happens and then the volume of messages really wraps up and takes off, uh, you might sort of rope in uh, individuals who are not, not. Yeah. So again, it, it's about a lot of people see social and think, oh, it's a public domain. I can't do this. I can't touch this. But actually, it's just about having a chat. Imagine you're in a cafe with a friend having a cup of coffee and having a chat in normal day-to-day -day language. Let's not use terminology that confuses people. Let's not dictate. 
be authentic and and be be approachable for some people that will never be cut out of social media um because actually they're not cut out they're not a people person in real life yeah and that's fine they've got other skills that can be used elsewhere as part of an industry um i wouldn't suggest leaving it till you're in a crisis to identify people I, I would always have some backup people um lined up that would be able to step in that have got a good personality and they can just reiterate um it's always good to look at competitors um social media feeds to find out what they're doing how they're doing and actually what they've done wrong um mm. and because people are really quick to say oh well i wouldn't have done that well, well what would you have done oh well, i would have done this that's great when we put you on a crisis on social media that's what we want you to do get people to explore what it should be like and what does social media mean for them. So I think people that are all too quick, as soon as they get behind a keyboard, they start typing out a corporate memo. Oh, and it's so just professional. It's reminding them that how would you deal with that on the phone? It's the same, you, yeah. you'd have a chat, you'd talk about the weather. <laughs> so it's not going corporate memo, it is just having a chat. So keeping it conversational like, like you would because it is social, yeah, it's not corporate, it's not right, you're not writing a press release, I guess, and put, posting that out, you're actually having a conversation, two-way conversation. Um, yeah, exactly. I think I want, somebody had once said, um, oh, I've got no water, and somebody had replied, I can confirm there is an issue in your area. And I just thought, it was one of those sort of face plant moments where you're just like, why, <laughs> why, why? why? <laughs> is this what we would say on the telephone um but with the right people the right skills um and just just trust in your team empower your team to be human um get rid of your 2068 page corporate image profile guidebook and just be human yeah it makes sense one of the things that we actually um recommend organizations do is you can take a real tweet a real question or a real complaint and practice offline how you would respond to it. So you can do it in a really safe environment. There's no risk that you've got to post something wrong. You can write it out, you know, just in a, just on your laptop, practice writing responses um, to help Absolutely. get out of that, that approach where you might be too formal. Absolutely, and we do quality screening as well, where actually we'll, we'll dip sample so many responses. Um, and then we'll send that around to the team and say, hey, everybody do this, everybody respond to this um, in an offline environment. And then we share that with the team. And then we end up coming up with sort of one explosive, brilliant response that we, we could that we could use time and time again. But it's also, don't worry about getting it wrong. There have been times when I've um, typed something and, and hit return too soon or something and sent something. And it's about owning up and saying, oops, sorry, you know, fat fingers chopped up there or something. And it, it adds to the human aspect. Yeah, no, I can definitely understand that. Um, so another couple of questions. Um, how do you deal with media slash journalists on, on social during incidents? Do you take it to direct messages or ask them to contact directly, uh, calling, calling a press office, for example? there's a mixture usually um usually they will contact us anyway so what i've started to do is always send them um our tweets by dm so that they're getting them as soon as i've tweeted them in case they've missed them mm -hmm. um that really easy because then they've got the information we do still get some that are phoning us and a bit like customers really we want to cut down on, on unnecessary phone calls i'd rather that they just took the information that we that we're sending out rather than Ask for another statement, which I've then got to type up. So the press I contacts think, reduce, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. yeah. So it, it's really if, if you keep them informed, if you can an update, then I send it to them by DM. So we've just released this, this latest information. Then that helps. Brilliant. So it's that proactiveness, I guess, to keep them keep them informed. Yeah. yeah great. Um, and another question. Um, do you have any contingencies in place for crisis when an incident occurs outside of office hours? I think you alluded to that a little bit earlier. Um, do you have remote logins, central 
central Google Doc or similar that people have access to. Um, so I guess sometimes it does happen in the middle of the night. You can't control that, right? You have to respond to the post. So. Um, so, so, so when an incident, obviously we have 24 hour cover, um, when an incident is declared, um, an incident team is formed um, of senior managers, um, and then we'll decide, depending on, we'll do a risk assessment, depending on what the likely contact is. Um, okay. Like I say, at, right now there could be a thousand properties with no water, but we can go in, feature, switch a few taps in the road, and everyone will have water within half an hour. Um, so we'll do a risk assessment to decide actually how much resource is this going to take. Um, and it's dependent on the number of properties, likely, le likely length of disruption. Um, and then we'll go from there. So the entity will be formed, we'll draft an extra resource if we need to. Um, it hasn't yet, but as part of our contingency plan, it is written in that actually if we were inundated with contacts and we couldn't keep up, then we would have to choose and, and prioritise who we would respond to. And that would be based on people's influencer scores and how many followers they've got, because we know that message will get back. It's not an ideal world and we don't advocate that because like I say, we still maintain 100% response rate um, and always having that last word. Um, but if it got to that, then absolutely we would have to consider that, especially if it was over a long period of time because it wouldn't be sustainable. So I think really when an incident is declared, we will try and get in the office. But if we can't get in the office, we can do it from anywhere. So. Um, and most of them have started in office hours anyway, in, in my experience. There was yeah. one that was sort of about five o'clock in the morning, but I was already up, so I was able to come in. But like, like we said, I was there in the morning, in. I've I just remember home. that being, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. try and get in, and then at least you, you've got all the information around you at that time. But if you're not, you can just do it from home and, and phone in and do it, do it online. Brilliant. Um, and uh, so that's all last questions. So thank you for submitting questions. Um, Christine, Aidan, it's been a, a real pleasure to have you on today. It's always super, super interesting to hear how um, you're handling these situations. So a lot of us kind of getting on with our everyday lives, you wouldn't even consider or think about, you know, how these things happen. But you, you make sure that they do happen and, and keep everyone informed. So thanks for doing that. Um, so thanks, thanks everyone for joining today. Um, I hope you've uh, enjoyed and found it, found it valuable and found it useful. Um, again, if you want to give us a shout out, please do tag us on uh, on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, which is your favourite social media channel of choice. Um, and I hope to see you on another Crowd Control HQ webinar very soon. So thanks everyone and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.